When performing a procedure on a patient, it is the healthcare worker's responsibility to protect that patient from infection. For this reason, many procedures are performed using sterile technique. The first step of sterile technique is to don sterile PPE. Improper donning methods will lead to the contamination of PPE, which can lead to the introduction of infectious agents to the patient, putting the patient at risk. In this video, the proper method of donning sterile PPE will be demonstrated, as well as some of the common issues you should avoid. Before you begin, the necessary supplies will need to be collected. This includes a sterile gown, a bouffant cap, eye protection, a surgical mask, and appropriately sized sterile gloves. Have two packages of sterile gloves available. In the event that sterility is broken, you may be able to don new gloves and continue your sterile procedure. For most procedures, you will need the aforementioned supplies, but if you are inserting a central venous catheter, the sterile gown is included in the kit. For all other kits, you will need to obtain a separate gown. If you do not have separate eye protection, such as goggles, it is also appropriate to use a surgical mask with attached eye shield. Before opening any supplies, wash your hands. Then don your surgical mask. It must be in place before you open any sterile supplies. Breathing on your sterile supplies can cause contamination. The mask must be in place over your mouth and nose before continuing. Don the bouffant cap. This must contain all of your hair. It will cover your ears and stretch down the back of your neck to contain and cover your hair. Don your eye protection if it is not attached to your surgical mask. Remove any jewelry from your hands. Leaving it on could risk puncturing the sterile gloves and lead to the contamination of the procedure. Wash your hands again. Open the gown by breaking the tape that keeps the pack closed. The contents of this gown pack are sterilely packaged. At this point, your hands are not sterile. You can touch non-sterile surfaces and supplies, but if you touch anything that is still sterile, it will be contaminated and you will need to restart with new supplies. The outer wrap is blue on the outside and white on the inside. You can touch the blue side with your hands, but do not touch the white surface of the wrap. This will contaminate your sterile field. The top flap of the package must be opened away from you. This will reveal the two side flaps that can be opened to their respective positions, and then open the final flap toward you. While opening, be careful only to touch the blue side of the sterile wrap. The open white surface is now your sterile field, with the exception of a one inch border around the edge of the field. No sterile supplies should touch this one inch border, and if they do, they will be considered contaminated. If the drape is opened inappropriately, it will cause contamination of the field. Opening the first flap towards you will force you to reach over the sterile field to open the final flap. Reaching over a sterile field while not wearing a sterile gown contaminates the field. You will need to restart with new supplies. With your field open, open one of the packages of sterile gloves. Drop the sterile inner wrapping and gloves onto the sterile field and dispose of the outer wrapping. Do not handle the sterilely packaged inner wrap prior to dropping it on the sterile field. When you touch the wrap, it is contaminated and anything that this wrap touches will now also be contaminated. So simply drop the gloves onto the field. You will open them during a later step. On the top of the gown is a sterile towel. You can use this towel to dry your hands if they are still damp from being washed. Otherwise, carefully pick it up without touching anything else on the sterile field and dispose of the towel. The sterile gown is now revealed. It is packaged inside out. You are able to touch the inside of the gown, but be careful not to touch the outside surface, or the gown will become contaminated and you will need to start over with new supplies. The collar is trimmed in white. You want to hold the collar and follow it around until you find the corners of the collar with both hands. Gently open the gown, and when it starts to open, remove it from the sterile field and pull the corners of the collar apart to fully open the gown. Grasp the ties and tie the gown behind your neck. Keep your elbows lifted high so you don't risk contaminating your gown by touching it with your arms. With the gown secured behind your neck, you can let go of the gown. Locate the sleeve openings. Insert one arm into the sleeve and extend your arm through. There is another gown tie that is still tied together in the front, and when you extend your arm, make sure that you lift the arm above this tie. Insert your second arm into the sleeve, and again, extend it, making sure that you lift your arm over the tie. While extending your arms into the sleeves, Make sure your hands do not exit the sleeve. You are donning this gown and gloves in what is known as a closed technique. And the key to this technique is that your hands remain contained within the sterile gown until they are covered by sterile gloves. There are many common issues with this stage of donning that will lead to contamination. Inserting your arms into the sleeves before tying the gown behind your neck will lead to a lot of additional movement to try to shrug the gown onto your shoulders. And it is likely that this will lead to contamination of the gown. And with your arms in the sterile gown, you will not be able to tie the gown behind your neck without assistance. Another issue is extending your arms with the arm below the ties. 
This will also potentially lead to contamination of the gown because it will require a lot of unnecessary movement to free your arms. Donning the gown in the correct way will eliminate the need for any additional movements and minimize the risk of contamination during this process. If you have succeeded to this point, the gown should be tied behind your neck. Your arms are in the sleeves, but your hands are still contained within the gown. The gown is still tied in the front. Because your hands are inside the gown, you can grasp and manipulate your sterile gown and supplies with your hands as long as you are only grabbing with the sterile gown. With your hands still in the sleeves cuff, untie the gown in the front. You will need an assistant to tie the back of the gown at the waist. Continue to maintain your hands inside the gown at this point. Sometimes, people will stretch their hands out of the sleeves as they are donning the gown. Sometimes people are very tall with long arms that make it difficult to keep their hands inside the gown. Be aware of these issues and limitations. It is important that your hands remain inside the sleeves during the donning process. If your hand does accidentally extend outside the gown, if you are careful, you may be able to sterilely slide it back in. Grabbing with the covered hand, grasp the cuff of the sleeve and carefully slide it over your hand, ensuring you do not touch any sterile outer part of the gown with your non-sterile hand. If both hands have exited the gown, this will not work, and you will need new supplies to move forward. Do not grasp the cuff at the end and pull the sleeve over your hand. The sterile sleeve will come in contact with your non-sterile hand, and you will need to start over with new supplies. With both hands still contained within the gown, go to your sterile gloves. Open the package and lay it out on the sterile field. Because your hands are still within the gown, you can manipulate sterile supplies within this field freely. Grasp one glove with the cuff of your gown and slide your opposite hand into the glove. Your hand must remain within the sleeve's cuff while applying the glove. The cuff will be completely contained underneath the glove. Then, gently pull back on the gown sleeve. With the glove on top of the cuff, this will pull the glove further onto the hand and allow your fingers to begin to exit the sleeve and enter the glove. Now, you can continue to use your covered hand to manipulate the glove, pulling it over the sleeve and maneuvering your fingers into place. With your sterilely gloved hand, you now have more freedom to manipulate the remaining glove, but apply it using the same technique. Keep your hand inside the sleeve's cuff Overlap the gown with the glove, gently pull the sleeve and glove down to allow your hand to slide into the glove. Issues arise when hands are not kept within the sleeves. If fingers are extended out of the sleeve, people think that it will be easier to don the glove, but it is very often that it leads to contamination of the gown. As the hand is inserted into the glove, the fingers are likely to come into contact with the other sleeve's cuff, causing contamination. It is also likely that when the glove is pulled over the hand, that the sleeve will slide down and not be contained under the glove, leading to a gap between the glove and the gown, which will leave non-sterile skin exposed. Another problem to be aware of is that if the sleeve is pulled back too forcefully when applying the glove, it can slide out from under the glove, again leading to the reveal of non-sterile skin and probable contamination. If you have avoided the potential problems, issues, and breaks in technique, you have successfully donned your sterile PPE and can continue to the procedure. The donning of sterile PPE is an important step in the sterile procedure. There are numerous ways that sterility can be broken during this process, and that can lead to the contamination of the procedure and the infection of the patient. Sterility during procedures can be the difference between life and death.